Hello everyone, welcome to Wandering Art. So I haven't posted a video in a few weeks. I've kind of been taking a mini vacay and I created these little bee animals while I was on my mini vacay. And um, today's video is about my Beauty and the Beast geode, but I did want to give you a little disclaimer. You may or may not have heard that the Disney owners and creators have been linked to some pedophilia accusations. Now I am not a expert on these things. I don't know what's true and what's not true, but I am going to leave some links in the description if you guys would like to educate yourself. There will be some documentaries, some videos, some organizations. Um, if you guys just want to check that out, it's going to be available down in the description. Now, I don't believe in cancel culture. You know, I think that people are still always going to watch Disney movies. I won't be buying any Disney toys or buying a car's bedspread for my son. But I do think people will still enjoy Disney movies. So I felt like I could still put this video up, but I did want to speak about this a little bit first. So let me know what you guys think of the video. And um, I'm going to jump right into it. My Beauty and the Beast Geode. And also, I did pick this theme a couple weeks ago. If I had picked it this week, I may have done something different. I did think about doing just like a honeycomb in the background, which would have been a lot easier for me instead of going through and painting this whole Disney scene. But I, I always like a challenge. It's something that I love to do, and I love to paint. So this is the process of me kind of imagining this little... Disney geode. At first I was thinking ballroom and then I realized I was going to be covering a lot of it up so I went more with the starry sky theme. And you can see I had big plans for this geode and I didn't realize how hard it was going to be to keep the clear in the middle. I just kept blowing all of the colors into the middle and it was just becoming very difficult. So right now I'm just showing you guys, um, this is the Just For You, you Online UK Gold I used. I used a pinata gold. I used some pearl white mica powder. This is my Starlight Glitter from Laura Usher. Stardust from Fox Rizzle. And I have some satin white acrylic paint as well. All of my materials are going to be listed in the description below. And this little video is showing you guys some trays I made with the epoxy that I'm using today. This was, um, besides these trays, this was the first time, my first time using this epoxy. It's called Total Bolt, Total Bolt, I can't say that right, Total Boat Epoxy. And I really like it. Um, I'm going to tell you guys there are some pros and cons to this resin. So cons, it does have a strong smell. You will need to work in a ventilated area and wear a respirator. It does have a strong smell. And I've noticed that I think it does have a lot of bubbles. When I gave it a hot water bath before I used the resin, I put the bottles in hot water. It worked really well. But one of the pros that I really, really like about this resin is how hard it can be. Um, this little tray I'm showing you guys, I think I got my ratios a tad mixed up because it was not as hard as the other two trays, but the two that I showed you before, they are rock solid. And I really like that because it's the worst thing in the world to make a tray or a coaster and it just never hardens. So I think Total Boat is a great um, epoxy if you're making, you know, coasters. And especially, have you seen those three-tiered trays that are now a thing? Wouldn't it be awful to use all that resin to create a three-tiered tray and it's not hard? So I think that this is a great choice if you're looking for something that has a very hard finish, very super shiny finish, and I would definitely recommend it. I think that I will be getting it again because I make a lot of coasters and a lot of little trays, and that's just something that I really, really need. And I can deal with the smell if I can be guaranteed a super hard, super shiny finish every time. So here I am. I am starting the geode. I put the tape on the sides, but honestly it was a bit useless because all of the rocks you see that I have glued on here, they were kind of pushing the tape out. So if you want your sides to be perfect, then you know you might want to leave some of your rocks off until the end. You could put some, but not all. So here's where I started having trouble, you guys. I was like, I'm going to put this white, and then I'm going to do the gold lines. But I could already tell that it was just flowing everywhere, and there was no way I was going to be able to do all these crazy lines and put that much resin on there without it getting into the middle. 
So I decided to just go with my mantra of simple is beautiful. And I, I would just do this pearl white mica powder all along the edges here. And then I would throw some gold in it. I was thinking I would try for something like a gold and white marble. Um, and, you know, that was kind of my idea. I also lined the little... Um, the lines between the sky and the resin. I lined that with some beebles from Laura Usher. And I like the beebles because they kind of remind me of little moonstones. So I thought that it was kind of cool because it's like looking into a dreamscape. Kind of like uh, the moonstones are the outside. They're like a barrier into this Beauty and the Beast dreamscape. So I kind of really like that idea. So that's what I went for. I lined the sides with the moonstone and then I used the Just For You Gold and the Pinata Gold in the Pearl White Mica. And I also used the Starlight Glitter. I put that on top of the um, stones here that I have. And I thought that that had a really amazing effect. I love this Starlight Glitter. That's what the little Yoda tray is made out of too, my Starlight Glitter. Um, it's one of my favorite glitters of all time, and I did get that glitter from Laura Usher as well. And I probably already mentioned it, but you guys can find all of my materials in the description along with links to where you can find these materials. So I really wanted to try and keep the line here, and this is how I knew that I wasn't going to be able to put, you know, more gold lines on here. Um, you know, it just wasn't going to work exactly how I wanted. So I think that doing something like I mentioned before, like doing the honeycomb background, just a plain background, like a floral background, something that it doesn't really matter where the clear is, I think that that would be really cool for a painted geode, because then it wouldn't matter. You could put clear in the middle, and if other colors got pushed into the clear, then it wouldn't be a big deal. But something like this, you know, I really wanted to have this, you know, these crisp lines for this dreamscape. And I saw that that wasn't going to happen up there, so I decided that that was where the dreamscape met reality up here. It was kind of seeping in. And I was kind of disappointed that I couldn't do what I originally wanted to do, but I still think that this turned out really cool. And I already have some people who are interested in um, buying it now that it is finally finished. And I am going to put it up on my Etsy if you guys want to check it out and see um, how much I'm going to charge for it when I decide. I know I'm not going to be charging a whole lot. This was my first time doing something like this. And also, um, I'm not great at painting teeny tiny faces. I think that I did a pretty good job um, on Belle and the Beast, but I it's really hard to paint teeny tiny faces. I'm good at painting big faces. I like I think the Beast, I did better on the Beast than Belle. I think she looks good, but I think that, you know, an expert tiny face painter could have done a little bit better. So here I am lining the beebles on there and I'm not going to show you guys this whole process because it took forever. I kept having to clean off my tweezers with some, I was actually using some vinegar because I didn't want to waste all this alcohol and I had to clean off the tweezers every every couple beebles. So here it is. Um, this was the first layer. How I finished the sides for this piece is I cleaned off all the extra resin here and then I sanded the sides, I painted them white, sanded it, painted them white and then when I did the final clear coat I just put resin all around the edges so they're just white with resin on top and I'll kind of show them to you in the last video as well. So this is me putting on the top clear coat. I went ahead and sanded it in some places, sanded the edge, and did the white around it. I thought about doing gold along the edges too, but since I went with the simple is beautiful effect, I did not want to complicate it. Here it is, the beautiful masterpiece finished here. I really love that starlight on those rocks. I think that that looks really awesome. And while this didn't turn out exactly how I thought it was, I wanted it to have more lines and be more complicated, but I think that it's really pretty, and I think that somebody who really loves Disney or really loves Beauty and the Beast is really going to appreciate this piece.
If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more artwork. I do have a lot of videos coming out this month just because I've been stocking up while I've been taking my break. So definitely um, check back later this week. I think I'll have another one and a few next week as well too. Let me know what you guys think what you guys think of more Disney geos. I kind of wanted to do Tiana and the Frog and um, do the olive and green, but with everything going on, I just, I don't know if that is a great idea right now. So definitely let me know your guys' thoughts and I will catch you all later. Bye!